Hi, my dear students. I hope you all are fine. In this video, we are going to see eighth social geography chapter three. Minerals and power resources. Chapter three. Minerals and power resources. First part of the thing is we are going to see is minerals, types of minerals, extraction of minerals, uses of minerals. and distribution of minerals in power resources we are going to see the types of power resources and the uses of every one and how to reserve the power resources these are the main objectives of this chapter what does mean by a mineral so uh, whether if we are eating biscuits can we able to see flour milk sugar eggs everything mix up together Yes, we are while we are eating the biscuit, we cannot all, see all the things separately. So everything is combined, so that the minerals we can define the minerals as a naturally occurring substance that have some chemical compounds. Naturally, minerals is not a human made; it is naturally occurred thing. From the rocks or something, we are getting this. So from rocks or something else, we are getting this underground in uh, in our earth underground. so we are using the word natural and all the minerals have some chemical chemical composition right so how can we define a naturally occurring substance that has a definite chemical composition is called minerals so it have both chemical property and physical property what are what are the physical property means you can see from here so each and every mineral having different colors right different density different hardness hardness these are the physical properties and chemical properties mean some of the minerals are soluble that is it dissolves in water and some of the minerals that does not dissolve in water that is a only one chemical property of minerals now we are going to see types of minerals the mainly the minerals are classified into metallic minerals non metallic minerals what is mean by metallic minerals the metallic minerals contains metal in a raw form for example iron ore bauxite magnesium etc and what is mean by non metallic minerals non metallic minerals do not contain metals what are the examples we can give for non metallic minerals we can give like limestone mica gypsum etc and the metallic minerals are again classified into ferrous and non ferrous yes from the word ferrous means what iron iron content if the mineral having iron ore in it then it is called as ferrous minerals example you can give more and more examples like magnesium chromite iron ore etc and if the minerals does not contain any metal any sorry any iron in it then it is called as non ferrous minerals example gold silver copper or lead etc so the main classifications are the minerals are divided into metallic and non metallic metallic is again further divided into ferrous and non ferrous while writing the types of minerals you need to give some examples one or two examples next we are going for extraction of minerals what is mean by extraction taking out the minerals from the rocks buried under the ground right the minerals won't be lying in the top portion of the soil it will be in the underground moreover it will be in the rocks buried in the earth so we want to take this carefully we are using three methods first one is mining the mining is again classified into open cast and shaft mining what is mean by mining the process of taking out minerals from the rocks buried in the ground is called mining what does mean by mining the process of taking out minerals that were buried in the earth surface that is called as mining the mining is again divided into open cast mining and shaft mining what does mean by open cast mining in this the minerals will lie in the shallow depth shallow means less depth very low depth so we can remove the surface of the layer and we can take out the mineral out we can remove the surface layer and we can take the mineral out that is called as open cast mining what is meant by shaft mining in shaft mining the mineral will be lying in the deep depth so if it is great depth open cast means low depth shaft mining means deep depth so we are using some bores to take the minerals out shafts etc we are doing some bores and we are putting some shaft and we are reaching the mineral and we are taking the mineral out this is called as shaft mining 
and the second method is drilling maximum petroleum and natural gas are obtained by this method deep wells are bored well deep wells are bored well general deep wells are bored and they are uh, using the drilling process and they will take the petrol and natural gas out and what is meant by quarrying minerals that lie near the surface uh, th this will be having low depth very near to the surface we are just simply ducking out and we are taking the minerals that is called as quarrying just simply ducking and taking out the minerals that is called as quarrying this is the three main types of extractions mining drilling quarrying the process of taking out the minerals from the rocks buried in the earth surface that is called as mining or extraction distribution of minerals actually in asia first we we will go by one by one continent china and india they are large producers of iron ore deposit iron ore deposit is more in china and and in india and world's half of the tin t a n tin it is um, actually tin where it is used when tin is mixed to bronze it will become copper so this tin is also a mineral half of the world tin is used is produced in this asia continent only and china malaysia indonesia everything are leading producers of this tin and china it is also leading producer of many things they have producing in china like uh, lead antimony tungsten etc many things are produced in china and we are next going for next continent europe yes europe is leading producer of iron ore in the world that is leading more uh, iron ore is produced in europe and in this uh, globe i have uh, shown you the continent europe the countries uh, the large deposit of iron ore will be in which country of europe means russia ukraine sweden and france and we are getting another another minerals like copper lead zinc magnesium nickel etc also found in this europe continent and north america actually north america in north america we will get actually we are dividing into three zones canadian region in canadian region actually we uh, canadian region and uh, aplangi region and the iron ore nickel gold uranium copper everything will be in canadian region and the aplangi region we will get the some coal and in western region we will get some copper lead zinc gold silver etc actually we are dividing the north america into three parts for getting the minerals canadian region aplangi region and west region so we are getting different uh, minerals from different part of north america and the high grade iron high grade means high quality iron we will get from south america particularly in brazil in brazil only we will get high grade of iron ore and it is also a leading producer of copper and we will get world's largest tin producer also in brazil and bolivia and we are getting silver zinc chromium magnesium etc also in south america and in africa you know very well africa is world famous for diamond gold and platinum these are the three important minerals we get from africa that too from south africa zimbabwe we, that is the largest production of gold world sorry gold in the world gold another mineral minerals we will get like copper iron chromium like that uranium and australia is the largest producer of bauxite bauxite will be more used in computer industries so we will use to make some chips or microcontrollers or etc to with the help of this bauxite and it is also a leading producer of gold diamond iron ore etc where and all we are using this minerals see where and all we are using this minerals in this diagram you can observe that um, actually this um, gold silver etc this will be used in jewelries and copper it is used in copper it is copper metal like another metals also used in coins pipes etc and silicon and bauxite that, that are used in um, computer industries and aluminium it is used in automobile industries like to make aeroplanes uh, bottling industries building industries etc these are the uses of minerals we are using this minerals in various parts how to conserve minerals conservation of minerals actually minerals are non renewable resource we cannot get again and again it will take lot and lot of thousands of years for the formation and concentration of this minerals so we should use the amount of what we are using rate of formation is more less than what we need what you consume so we want to reduce the use of minerals we want to re reuse all the minerals like uh, um, computer parts or whatever it is we want to reuse it and we want to recycle all the metals what we are using and like that we can conserve this minerals yes now we are moving to the second part of this chapter first part we have seen about minerals 
types, extraction, uses, distributions, etc. This is the second part of the chapter. I already said you, can you guess something from this picture? See, they have given solar energy, wind energy, hydro energy, biogas, many things they have given here. So, can you able to guess something from this? Yes, we are going to see about power resources. Power resources. See, can you able to live without power? Can you able to live without uh, whatever electronics or electrical things that has been made with the help of power, that has been, that you are using with the help of power? Can you able to live? Can you able to live without fan or mixi, grinder, gadgets, electronic instruments, computers, TVs, heaters? Nothing. We cannot live. Power or energy is a vichal. Vichal means important role in our life. It plays an important role. Without, without power supply, we cannot live. Right. We are using motors to pump the water. We are using fan, light, heaters, mixi, grinders. Uh, TV, mobile phones, communication, industries, agriculture, transport, communication, defense, everything depend upon this power. So, broadly the power is classified into two. So, the power resources are classified into two. Conventional resources, non-conventional resources. What does it mean by conventional resources? That have been used in a long, common use for a long time. We are using thousands from this uh, types of conventional resource from a long time that is thousands of years ago before we are using the this conventional resource right what are the divisions of conventional resource commercial non-commercial commercial means coal petrol electricity etc non-commercial means uh, we, which we are practicing like firewood fra bright dunk etc and non-conventional resource what does it mean by non-conventional resource actually non-conventional resource that produce that the increasing uses usage of this fossil fuels be getting shortage today so we need some other resource so recently they have introduced this non-conventional resource it came into use recently the main difference between conventional and non-conventional is conventional resource we are using for a long time ago non-conventional they have introduced recently due to the shortage of conventional resources so under that we are going to see biogas solar wind tidal etc so, one by one we are going to see. So, the first type of conventional resource it is firewood. Actually, it is used for cooking, heating, etc. And 50% of our uh, village peoples, they are using this firewood only for cooking and uh, whatever it is heating purpose, etc. 50%. The, the, uh, the fossil fuels, the fossil fuels like coal, petroleum, natural gas, everything we are obtaining them. All the things are called fossil fuels. Fossil fuels means coal, petrol, natural gas. These are the main sources of conventional resources. And these minerals are very limited. And nowadays the world population it is becoming greater. For, it is increasing, going on increasing. So the consumption, uh, consumption should be very less. The production is very low but the consumption is too much. So first we are going for coal. Where we are using this coal? Do you have any idea? In steam engines to elect generate electricity and in uh, many industries and domestic fuels we are using this coal and it is also called as thermal power and uh, actually the coal it, uh, how the coal is produced do you know uh, before millions of years ago the uh, giant ferns and swamps it was buried inside the ground this that was converted into coal so it is also called as buried sunshine before millions of years the ferns and swamps it becomes the coal so only it is also called as buried sunshine and petrol petrol is also called as black gold where and all we are using petrols to run cars for uh, speaking cycles we are pouring oil and also many purposes we are using this petrol and uh, you already i uh, discussed you how to extract petrol by using drilling process we are going to put a uh, drill well and we are going to take the petrol from the underground of the earth surface and uh, petrol is also called as black gold this may be due to its valuable also may be due to its rate and what are the extra products we are getting from this actually we will get crude oil only from this crude oil only we are producing diesel petrol kerosene wax etc and we will get this uh, petrol from iran iraq saudi arabia qatar etc and while obtaining the petrol itself we are getting the natural gas oil so natural gas is also found with this petrol deposit and released when the crude oil is taken out from the surface it is released 
and it is used for many domestic and industrial purpose like uh, you can see the cars and uh, motors they are using some gas cylinders and another main um, conventional resource is hydel power actually from the dams the, um, the dams will be situated in a very high top it will be located in a high places so when the force water is flowing into this touching this turbine the turbine will start to rotate the turbine will be interconnected with the generator if the turbine started to rotate the generator will produce electricity that electricity is used for stored and used for some other purpose the extra water will be um, used for irrigation you can see this the extra water from this uh, hydel power will be used for irrigation and one third of the population in the world they are using this hydro electricity that is hydel power and what are we gone through in conventional resources first one firewood second one uh, fossil fuels like coal petrol natural gas and third one it is hydel power and uh, non conventional resources i already said that nowadays we are consuming more uh, petrol diesel natural gas etc actually if we need a 100 percentage of this means we are getting only 30 percentage so due to over consumption and over use we are uh, we want to we want some other option so we are going for non conventional resource and it was came into use very recently for example we are using the renewable resources like sunlight wind rain tides and whatever we are getting naturally we are converting this into a non into a power resource though it is called as non conventional resource and first type of non conventional resource we are going to see is solar energy the energy we get from sun what are the energy we can get from sun heat energy and light energy the when when it touches the solar cells the many solar cells form solar panels here you can see that so it will be mostly in black color because black will absorb here absorb light more so this uh, energy is converted into solar energy and the uses of solar energy is we are using in solar cookers solar calculators solar bikes and many uh, solar dryers are etc we are using the solar energy in many places and second one we are going for wind energy see wind power is a conver conversion of we are getting more wind actually right we are using this wind and we are converting this into a useful form that is energy into converted into an electric energy and you can see this in uk usa spain even in india also in you know, germany netherland etc and third one is nuclear power see here the radioactive elements you already know that uranium and thorium any one of the radioactive elements you are going to place in this cylinders in this um, actually in this part and we are uh, and why it will get fission fusion means that if the if the atom joins it is called as fusion if the atom it is uh, separates it is called as fission when the atom fission occurs that is when it separating it will release more amount of heat energy so this cylinder is completely covered with water so when this fission during this fission it will release heat energy no so the water will become hot water at the extreme it will become a steam when the steam touches this turbine turbine starts to rotate if the turbine rotate the generator will produce electricity this is the working of nuclear energy we can see more amount of nuclear plants in another countries and also in our countries usa is the largest producers and the next one is geothermal energy actually inside while we are going up climbing up the mountain we will feel cool while we are going underground we will feel heat this is the basic if we are going up we will be the temperature will be decreasing if we are going down inside the earth surface the temperature will be increasing we are using that temperature that heat energy to convert the into electricity how listen here we are burying and we are putting the well the heat energy will be there so the water will be converted into hot water again the hot water will converted into steam if the team uh, steam touches the turbine the turbine will rotate if the turbine rotate the generator will produce electricity this is the main concept the heat energy where we are absorbing from the earth is converted into geothermal energy and tidal energy means the the tidal wave uh, the energy we get from tides uh, energy which uh, produces from tides that is called as tidal energy actually we we, we build this setup in near, under the dams at the narrow dams we will build this setup like turbine and uh, generator under the dams you can see in this picture and when the low tide uh, when the high tide is, it touches the uh, when, sorry when the low tide it uh, touches the turbine the turbine start to rotate and the generator will produce electricity and the last one is biogas um, biogas means the organic waste or dead plants or animals matters materials and maybe the animal dung and the kitchen waste everything is stored in this tank and it is converted into after um, some time it will converted into gas 
so we are going to convert taking that gas and using for some other purpose like uh, uh, filling the gas for um, in the cylinders and we are using for cooking purposes and uh, here in the extra pass like slurry means the waste will come out so this is about biogas so energy is found everywhere just we are concluding energy is found everywhere but it is not um, we are not using that property nowadays and it is very costly you to use that if you are setting a solar panel it will take 6000 rupees so only we are not going for that so as a student you want to produce different types of uh, in this energies with a low cost so that uh, you can win in your life also the people can use your products what you are producing and we should not waste any energy and we should generate more energy so that only our future will be more brighter thank you dears we, sh we shall continue our next chapter in the next video thank you dears